There's not one single organization that's going to magically deliver the strategy to you or, or for you. It's very much made up of, of activity like those that I've heard about this afternoon. And really the change that we want to see happen, it's a sort of, uh, cheesy, cliche term, but I haven't heard anybody in the room saying, I wish so-and-so would just do this, or I would do this project only if organisation X gave me permission. And, you know, that's very much got to be at the heart of what happens next week, next year, and over the next 30 years, if Manchester's got any chance of realising its ambitions on climate change. My name is Brian Lee and I'm from Sitstar. Um, we are a non-profit cooperative based in Chilton um, and we describe ourselves as a sustainable fashion hub. So our central mission is to inspire people to dress in a more creative and a more sustainable way than we can throw away every year around the same amount we buy each year, which is kind of crazy. However, it's not all doom and gloom. Um, at Sitstar, what we aim to do is to enable people to, to find their own solutions to these problems they can implement in their day-to-day -day lives. So we teach um, how to alter, repair, reuse clothing textiles, we teach basic sewing skills, where we kind of um, keep clothes being used even though they've been discarded by their original owner. We have a reclaimed cardiology in our place in Chilton. Um, which we sell online in Manchester, and a little micro fashion collection. It was really micro, but it did happen. Um, so, yeah, we've basically got second hand clothing that we decided by somebody, and then we kind of use upcycling and repair to kind of give it a new lease of life. So, an example of a project we're working on at the moment is a big big fashion show. Um, this is a picture from last year's event, and it's going to happen in April this year, so we're going to be showcasing. Local sustainable fashion I firmly believe in the importance of having an on site presence supporting students throughout the year and actively engaging and educating by example, especially during the start of their university life. We have also donated approximately four tons of bedding, as well as sealed and in date food and toiletries to local shelters, including the Abbott Lodge. Manchester City Mission and Lancaster House. We were permitted to enter rooms and kitchens to clear the usable items, which were then collected by charities. Items including a complete tent, a box of Cuban cigars, handbags and clothing with tags still left on, money, musical keyboards, designer clothing, a massage chair, library books, various tech items including iPhones, hard drives, headphones, you name it, we found it. So the remaining items are thoroughly cleaned, using, usually using on-site facilities, and resold to new intake students at low rates. It's the running of these pop-up shops, which, is, which currently provides Unicycle with its only source of income. However, we are looking to explore funding opportunities that may be available to help secure our future. According to the Complete University Guide Online, there are over 150 universities in the UK. And it's a sobering thought when you realise that this waste is going on across all university halls of residence every year. It's estimated that in Manchester alone, it's 272,000 disposable food cups used daily. Disposable uh, cups spend minutes in your hands, but it's 50 years in landfill. So, keep up reading the works two ways. So, we need cafes that also encourage the use of their customers. So, most of our cafes generally offer maybe a preferred to fill for child and just not like to keep up. Also, a um, discount for the use of courage that to come back in the cup so we can get a discount for bringing them useful and really it's just a, a good on you. And you have this kind of we're trying to get a behavioural message of reuse rather than use once, recycle, edible, biodegradable, because that uses energy still to make that in the first place. It's about reuse and reusing over a long period of time to get away from single use items. We uh, pioneered household recycling initially and we set up a battery service and, and the same thing we were just collecting from the street um, from businesses. Uh, and kind of our bread and butter now is confidential shredding. We did a waste order for um, Kellogg's a few years ago 
their whole, all of their waste from the building over several weeks. Um, and one of the big um, apart from taking away the little desk bins so that people didn't put any old crap in there, um, we also recommended that they get rid of all the paper cups and they move towards their own. They haven't got one of yours. I don't think you existed back then, maybe, but they, they developed a Kellogg's cup, so all staff have those now. And um, we go out to construction sites and collect, collect redundant timber, bring it back to the site, and we upcycle it and train people in terms of you know, joinery skills, that sort of thing. Um, the wood and stuff. Some of it for DIY purposes to the public, and then we make bespoke products, whether it's fencing or shelves or whatever. We also, a few years ago, decided to work in partnership with a national charity which is called Fair Share. They're basically, Fair Share is a national charity and emerged runs well the Greater Manchester branch of it. Um, we started off trying to do it for the North West, but realised pretty quickly that actually there's a whole heap of need right here in Greater Manchester. Fair Share organises with um, the big food companies, so all the supermarkets put their supply chains where there is surplus in day food. Basically, that food gets delivered to, um, to partners at depots across the country. We have an army of volunteers who help us to organise it, um, and make sure that it's in full compliance with food safety. One of the things that we really need to help with is helping us to rescue fruit and veg on the Smith market. So there's about 5,000 tonnes of fruit and veg that goes into um, composting every year. And there's probably at least, theoretically, between 5 and 10% of that, which is fit for human consumption if we can rescue it. Sort of.